Hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. Hello. 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 Hi. Welcome to our virtual bridge sessions. I think this is number five officially. Um, and today we're joined literally by everyone, um, but especially with Nader from Fourth Valley College. And he's going to be delivering today on his use of MS Teams, um, integrating it with Moodle and uh, an element of how we uses one note. And that's me up there, so um, well. obviously the camera's not on. <laughs> so, um, there may be an element of me muting people as we go along. <laughs> Are we not better just to hope. switch our microphones off? You, mm -hmm. you, you could do, but I, I feel bad. You know, I feel bad telling people to turn off their mics. Then so no, we could come in when we need to. Well, you, yes. Uh -huh. People from different colleges. <laughs> yes, we're, we're all over. So, okay, so I, I suppose just for just for today. Uh, it's up to you. Um, Morning. If, How are you? If, <laughs> I feel, if you want to mute your mic just for the moment, and in the last 10 minutes, we'll have a bit of an open discussion. Very nice. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to hand over to, to Nader uh, as, as, I, as I gradually um, mute people for, on your behalf. So Nader, <laughs> hi, and I, I apologize in, in advance if, if I do happen to mute you. Um, Nader, if you want to share your screen, it's just you move your menu, uh, move your cursor uh, in, into the screen. Menu yes. appears at the bottom. There's a, a kind of box. All oh, right, okay, so you're, yeah, you're all good. Yeah, practiced it Yeah, the other night. Uh, Professional, okay. <laughs> yeah. So over to Nader. Thank you. Now, good morning, everyone. I see we've got about 74 participants, which is amazing. Wasn't expecting that. Uh, Kenji was telling me that we can expect something around 20 to 30 people. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm very pleased that we have so many people joining in. Uh, good morning, everyone. Now, before I make a start, I would like to point out that uh, the reason we want the microphones off is to reduce the background noise. Sometimes we've got our microphone on we don't say anything, but the likes of my dog starts barking. Hiya, good morning. Uh, and uh, however, my main point at the moment is that I don't want this to be a formal session. Okay, and uh, normally, according to Kenji, there is a 20 minute presentation followed by a 10 minute Q&A session. But that to me would be a bit of a boring session. So what I like to do is, I will do my presentation. I will ask everyone to have their mix off for now. But if anyone has any questions or queries or any suggestions they want to make while I'm talking, please leave a chat note to Kenji. And then Kenji, as the moderator, can jump in at any time and says, oh, uh, someone has asked this question while you're doing this. Can you show that or can you explain a bit more? So please, guys, don't wait till the end. If within a couple of minutes you have a question, and we, we didn't follow me quite uh, clearly enough, just drop a note for Kenji in the chat section and uh, Kenji will get to me and I'll be able to explain. Does everyone know how to use the chat section? Uh, next to, at the bottom where it says reaction, record, chat, if you click on that, then you will see all the chat that is being uh, uh, made by everyone. So now I can, see that and I can see that there are a couple of chats from uh, Joy McLean and sorry Ryan Burns, uh, Claire, for ev to everyone. Uh, so at any time please drop a note in the chat section. Okay so what I'm going to do now is go ahead and share my screen with you guys and just talk about how I've been doing this. Before I go any further, I'd like to um, introduce myself. I'm Nader Jarmus from Fourth Valley College. I'm a lecturer in electrical and electronic engineering. And uh, I'm also an e-learning coordinator at Fourth Valley College, delivering a project management course online. I've been doing this for the past eight years. And because of that, I've got some knowledge and some expertise that I can share with my colleagues and with you guys. So before I go any further, I'd like to share my screen and just give you a bit of a background into my activity first. So here is uh, uh, my screen. And I'm going to share that. So if I open my... Oh, this is, sorry guys, this is a bit different. I think this only opens the screens that are open already. Uh, so I need to rearrange that. 
so what I want to do, oh, <laughs> this isn't working. So uh, hold on one sec. There we go. Right. So now I uh, can you see my screen at the moment? Uh, Kenji, can yes. you tell me if you, you can see my screen? Yep. Yep, we can see it. Yes. So, there we go. Right. I'm, I'm sharing my screen. So basically, uh, I'm using web-based technologies in learning and teaching, and I have used that for the past eight years. I wanted to do an online course in project management, which is a PDA or a CFMI diploma in project management, but I wanted it to be different from the average online course. Uh, there are hundreds and thousands of online courses, and they all share the same trait material is provided for students online, they do the activities, they do the assignments and they pass. There is no uh, individual uh, relationship between the tutor and the student or between the class. I wanted it to be uh, interactive. So I wanted to see my students and that has made a massive difference. So my, uh, the course was uh, the CMI Diploma in Project Management. It's been running for eight years and I've been delivering it to people in various sectors across the UK. Uh, it doesn't matter what uh, your job is, what your project is. I teach you the basics of project management. I teach them mechanics of project management, and then they apply it to their own project, which is a live project they're doing at work, rather than doing it uh, as a case study. So my primary objectives were inclusion and engagement, right from start, uh, inclusion, is about uh, allowing people to attend the course from anywhere, regardless of their physical barriers, whether they can attend or not, and also whether they are at work and they cannot attend. So inclusion, by providing all the course material on Moodle, uh, they can access it at any time they wish, they can do their own work at their own time. Uh, engagement was the hard part. Uh, Online courses are very boring. They're always one-on-one -on -one and there is no virtual community where people can meet and chat. At the best, they can do it via text. And that's not the same. What I wanted was to be able to see my students in a virtual community and get to know them personally. And that has made a massive engagement to my delivery. As an example, this year I've got four managers from Edinburgh Airport doing massive projects. One project, for example, is uh, upgrading the entire IT system and uh, server system in Edinburgh Airport. Now, this is a massive project, very influential in terms of managing the Edinburgh Airport. So I managed to set up a meeting with all four managers. At first, when they all appeared, they were so nervous, they were scared, they didn't know what to expect. And then uh, by the end, after an hour and a half, they were all smiling, laughing, very relaxed because they, they were seeing each other one-on-one. -on -one. They were seeing ourselves as a group and I could see the expression on their faces. So when I was explaining something as if in a normal class, I could see from the faces of the students whether they were following or not. So the virtual community has made a massive uh, difference to my uh, delivery. Now to make it easy for students, I tried to integrate three different platforms. The Moodle, which is for the delivery of the course material. One note is for this place for the students to do their own work and the MS Teams for a virtual community. So MS Team, we created the virtual community where we meet each other, we can chat unofficially or informally, and we can arrange to meet uh, uh, either individually or as a group. Normally I have a class every Wednesday morning and I meet them. Uh, it's a workshop rather than a lesson. They pop in if they wish, they will discuss their queries, they will discuss the course progress, I tell them what to do, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And then they go ahead away and do it. That makes them feel at ease because they've met me in, uh, as a person rather than in email where you send a chain of emails repeating the same questions or tangential questions and so forth. This way we meet, we discuss it in person and it's much easier done. The one note is a space for the students to do their own work. It's their own environment. Again, I provide all the material for them, uh, but unlike Moodle, one note is infographic. They don't have to go through the course uh, sequentially like they do in OneNote, uh, activity after activity after act activity. 
in one node, they have access to all the material in one go. So they can jump between the different sections and they can access the material much easier. I will demonstrate in a moment. Moodle is the official uh, platform for the de delivery of the course. That's where all the material uh, is stored, all the assignments are and activities, and the students upload their assignments and, uh, uh, into Moodle for record keeping and for formal grading. So at the end of the year, I can uh, say that uh, all my students have passed here or all the activities that we've done, the assignments that have been passed, and then I can store it for uh, in, uh, IV internal verification or external verification in future if it's needed. Now, the outcome for this has been a fantastic project done by students. Uh, in previous years, we had students doing uh, offshore generation, onshore distribution, a lot of different organizations doing these courses for life projects. And, uh, but the best part of it has been the learning curve that I had to go through. I had to learn how to use these platforms and share it with my students. And because I've got this expertise now, I've been able to share it with my colleagues at Fort Valley College and indeed the wider community with you guys. And this uh, has been an exceptional experience for me, teaching me how to do online delivery. And I've also learned uh, uh, what the mistakes are, what the drawbacks are, and what is the best practice, which I've been sharing with colleagues as it is anyway. So that's the end of my presentation on that. Now, what I want to do is just go through uh, Teams, OneNote, and uh, Moodle. Can you still see my screen? I've changed yes. screen. Yes, yeah, we can see it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks, Rachel, for the thumbs up. Uh, Graham, good to see you relaxed and chilled as well. Uh, only problem, William, sorry, Graham, is that we cannot see your ponytail. It's being wasted at the moment. Turn around. So I can see it's still there. No? I've had a haircut. <laughs> oh, <good>. no. Oh, <laughs> no. Oh, you're one of us then. Anyway, so I'm going to demonstrate how I've achieved this. Again, please, at any time, come in and ask a question via the chat. So my PDA project management, the front page, which is the post, you can see the posts I've put in, any uh, meetings that we've had, etc. And then I've got my class one note. Now this is a OneNote notebook. I have uh, a lot. I have provided all the information and the material here for the students, and my students can see uh, all the notes. They will also have their own space, uh, which I'll come back to. Before I go through this, I would like to go through my Moodle page. So what I've done now, I've actually integrated Moodle into OneNote, not into OneNote, into MS Team. So everything is there for them that they want, and it's also easier for me. So now I'm talking to, imagine you're my students, I'm explaining to you what the course is about, what the first topic is. So for example, the first topic is the project rationale. They can go into the folder, they can study the material, carry out the task as required, and then they submit their assignment. Here I can go into the assignment and uh, directly grade them without having to go out and back into Moodle. So it gives me a lot of uh, accessibility, the same for my students. However, as we can see, the problem with Moodle is that uh, it's very much, oops, sorry, uh, uh, sequential or uh, the students uh, have to follow the course as it is designed and as we call it, the role of death. So they do the rationale, goals and objectives, move on at, at their own pace, and so on. So it is very much uh, symmetric. However, if I go back to my class notebook, now here I've done exactly the same as my Moodle. I haven't created anything new. What I have done is I've taken my documents and I've uploaded them into OneNote, exactly the same documents, but here, the students have access to the material uh, in one page. So again, if I go to Project Rationale, which was the first outcome, they've got access to the study notes, they've got access to the activities and so forth, and they've also got access to uh, webinars, which are provided by other professionals. In this instance, uh, projectmanager.com, 
which is a professional community and they have massive resources. So rather than re-recording the lesson, I use uh, the lessons that are provided on YouTube by this company. I've contacted them and they're happy for me to use their teaching material anyway. So they've given me permission. But even if, they, if I hadn't bothered, I would still be able to upload the material into Moodle and, or sorry, into SharePoint, no, no, one note, third time lucky, and demonstrate it. I don't have to worry about copyright issues or infringement because all I'm providing is the link to YouTube. I'm not copying their material. I'm just providing a signpost. My students here also have access to their own web page and each one has their own space where they can uh, upload their material, they can do their logs, they can do their work, uh, and then at the end, they will submit. So here I can look at their activity, give them uh, pointers what to do. Uh, another one, if I may in, uh, look at, is the project, the engineering project, which is a graded unit for the HND second year. Again, here uh, I can look at the class notebook, and yet again, I've included my Moodle stuff in here. I've also got the Moodle page and everything is here for them. So rather than having to go through Moodle, open the document, the document is already there. They can view it, they can do their work, they can create their own logs. For example, if I look at one of my students, uh, Cameron Allen, I've asked him to uh, create a proposal and the log, and he's already done it for me, and I've given him a feedback so he knows immediately rather than having to wait. So basically, what I've done is I've put all the three uh, uh, terminals or platforms into one package, and I've shared it with my students. So rather than having to go between different terminals to talk, we go into one terminal, we go onto the platform of the Teams, uh, we can meet each other, discuss problems or discuss uh, feedbacks and uh, progress. I can provide them with uh, the lecturing material, the teaching stuff in Moodle. They can upload their assignments in there and get graded. And I can also provide all the material in one note and give them their own space where they can do their work. And I can keep an eye on their progress, tell them what to do. So one note becomes very much informal a one-to-one -one base uh, for delivery of the course. So basically, that's my presentation. Now, I was uh, going to give you a quick start on how to set up a OneNote team, and uh, but we're running out of team, out of time. Uh, can I have another five minutes, Kenji, or are we uh, okay with that so far? Sure, sure. No, um, we we started um three or four minutes late, so okay. By all so. Means. Um, my plan was just to give you a kickstart. How do we do this? Uh, if you go to Office 365, uh, you download the Teams app, and then you get uh, you open it up, and you get something like this. I have a lot of Teams. You will probably have no team or maybe one or two. So let's say I want to create a team for my project group. So uh, first of all, I always... Uh, advise my colleagues when I'm teaching them how to do this to create a team just for themselves. Maybe invite one or two colleagues to join in. I've created one which I call trial. This is where I do all my learning. Before I upload material onto my formal teams, I go in here, I try out uh, how I would do it, uh, do my messing around, learn how to use the team itself. When I'm happy with the feature, then I go to my team and uh, install it there or upload it there. So uh, we go to the teams, we've got a set of buttons uh, on the left-hand side. Activity tells us what's been happening in the teams in general. So I can see all my activities, what's happening. I can either look at general feed or my own activities, which I've been taking part in. Now, I'm aware that because I'm sharing screen, it takes a bit longer than normal, so I need to do it slowly. Chat is where we meet individuals. So if I want to have a private chat with one of my colleagues or a couple of my colleagues, I can talk to them directly one-on-one -on -one rather than in the front page where everyone can see. Teams gives me the list of all the teams that I'm involved in. 
assignments. Uh, I can look at the assignments that my uh, students have submitted or the ones that I'm preparing. Calendar. Now, the beauty of the team is that it's integrated with Office 365. So my Outlook calendar is imported into Teams. I don't have to create a separate one. Looking at my calendar, I can see exactly what my uh, uh, meetings are, when I've got one, and I can set up a meeting. So let's say I want to set up a meeting for Thursday at uh, 10 o'clock. I can click on that and then add the title, add the people that I want, uh, make it repeat, add the channel. I don't want it to appear for everyone. I want only certain students to see that who are, for example, engaged in project management then I will set it up in that team only. So no one else can come in except the students from my team. Calls, I can make direct calls uh, to the colleagues that I've got. Files are where I've stored all my documents. Uh, and then we've got the three dots or the ellipses. I can add uh, apps directly in here. For example, if I want to bring in a OneNote, I can do that. Or indeed, Zoom, uh, I can add Zoom to my office, which I've already, to my team, which I've already done. And now if I want to meet anyone external, I can use Zoom or even indeed directly in, internal with my students. So I can add extra tabs if I wish. Now, if I go back to my teams, so these are the uh, basic tools. Now I want to create a team. So I click on that and then I will create a team. I can also join a team. If I've got external people that have invited me, they will send me the link and the code, then I can join their team directly if it's allowed by organization. So I'm going to create a team. Now I've got the choices, if it's for my class or professional learning community or uh, staff, but I'm going to create a team for my class. So I'm going to give it a name. So I want to call it a project, for example. And a quick description, let's say graded unit. I don't have to put it in, but it's just there if uh, I want to. Next, it's asking me to add participants. Uh, I can add students or teachers. Teachers will have full access and editing rights. Students don't. Students can only upload assignments and download material that is provided for them. However, at this point, I don't want to do that because I first want to create my team then when I'm happy with it, then invite students. So I'm going to skip that for now. When I've set up my team and I'm happy, then I will go to the three dots in here, and then I can add members uh, at my uh, leisure. Uh, so I'm going to the, do that now. So upload class material. Now I can set up the kind of a team that I want. So I can upload all my class material here simply by going to upload and I can upload from my uh, drive or from a cloud or anywhere I've got, or I can create new documents. I can create a folder. For example, what I do is if I have got three outcomes, I would create three different folders, one for each outcome. I can also create a Word, Excel or PowerPoint presentations where students can download and uh, take part with that. So I've uploaded my material, then my class notebook. Now, uh, the best way is to in, uh, set up a OneNote class notebook. I can use an existing not one or blank notebook, which is the better one. So I've got these facilities here. I'm not gonna go through them, uh, they take too long. But the student section, each student will, will get their own tab where they will have, uh, so, it would take a while for do this. Uh, assignments, I don't tend to use it because I've got Moodle. And the problem with assignments is that we cannot really put in summative assignments. What we can do is create formative assignments in terms of uh, putting open-ended questions in forms or close-ended questions as multiple choice in forms and create it there. And when we do that, if it's a multiple choice, then the platform will automatically grade it for us and the students can see their grade. Now, another thing that I would like to do is add my Moodle page to this. To do that, what I need to do is add a tab. I would go to website and then I will call that say Moodle. Then I will go to my browser, open up my Moodle page, 
get the link for that and paste it in here and then it will uh, appear here instead which is uh, i'm not going to do that at the moment because it takes too long but if i go back to my pda and project management i can see that my moodle page uh, is here already and that's the way i've done it it's very very simple very easy moodle is now integrated with just a couple of clicks and i have access to all the materials same with the students and that is basically uh, my presentation. So I'm going to stop the share and come back to the normal. So here uh, we have it all in one place and it's much easier to deal with students and provide them with all the material. I hope that was of use to you guys and uh, if any of you want to come back to me later on, for example, you were not sure, of, you forgot about how to do uh, add Moodle to that or how to do something else, you can always get my email from Kenji drop me an email and I'll be happy to demonstrate with you again, go over it. Nader, Thank sorry. you very much for listening. Nader. <laughs> I, I, I feel I should clap, but um, you know, no. th think of it as silent clapping. <laughs> but, um, what is the sound of one hand clapping? <laughs> Zen. No, no, sorry. Um, so one of the questions uh, that Dale posted earlier was, um, do you use Moodle as an area for security for assignments? And then yes. use the grading tools, which are not available in, in OneNote or, or, or Teams. Yes, uh, Teams is informal. If I put my assignments in there, I can again grade them and give them feedback, but I don't have a way of really storing them for prosperity, for the future. In Moodle, it's a, a, a secure environment. No one can change anything in there. So all the assignments are uploaded into Moodle. I can grade them either using rubric or any other method. And then uh, the grading will stay there. And it's an easier way of managing the grading. And also for record keeping and uh, for doing my registers and submitting my uh, registers at the end of the year, who has passed, who hasn't. It makes it a lot easier to manage the grading and the uh, progress of the students. Okay. And, and I, oh, I just, just before sorry. I finish, and also at the end of the year, I can uh, store all the submissions and all the grades into a separate area. So when I start next year with a new group of students, I still have uh, the record of the previous year's students if there is a query and we need to get back to it. Right. Um, <clears throat> I, I know that within some schools who use Teams, um, it is possible to set up a team as a classroom and you do yes. get access to assignments and, and to grading and to marking rubrics. And I know that in, in other institutions, you can, you can link Turnitin into Teams and some people do the assignments via Turnitin uh, yes. and, and submit that and you can use that as a collective. So are, yes. are you... I, I can't remember if Turnitin is used at Force In Moodle, Valley. yeah. It yeah. is, right, okay. So Well, we, we use Arcart, which is uh, better Similar. in my uh -huh. opinion. Yes. And uh -huh. again, uh, the beauty of it is that uh, it's integrated into the assignment. So as soon as the students submit, I know exactly uh, whether it is their own work or whether it's been plagiarized. I don't need to do anything. Arcart will automatically give me the report. As soon as they make a submission, it checks it and gives me the report. One, one thing about Teams, I mean, when, when I use Moodle, uh, I, I would say that the thing that's probably the toughest thing to get people to do is to, to collaborate, to chat, and to talk. And mm -hmm. e even though I have defended the use of the forum uh, yeah. and other kind of communication sort of mediums within things like Moodle, um, I, I can't say that everyone is really passionate. I agree. About, yeah. I agree. So I, I, I agree that... Um, I had the chat, I had the wiki area in my Moodle and nobody was using it. In the beginning, yeah, they would come in, hello, how are you, and that's it. But after that, the chat section, the wiki section was totally blank. It was all via email. <laughs> Whereas yeah. in team, we see each other face to face. So we don't need to chat anymore. I don't need to force them. Can you please come into the chat and say something? Or can you go into your wiki and put in your logs? Here, I can see straight away who is doing it, who is not doing it, and it's much more interactive and user-friendly. So I, I would say one of the strengths of, of Teams, using that as a kind of collaboration, communication 
tool definitely sitting alongside Moodle is yep. is especially its app um, yeah. A lot of students do like to use the app, and the, the, the Teams app is pretty good. Yeah, and, and they use it on their mobile. Uh, it's much easier for them. Uh, most of my students actually use mobile rather than laptop. And the, also, the other beauty of the Teams is that within the team, they've got their OneNote. So, for example, my students are at work. They are changing an entire uh, wiring system, and that's their project. So while they're doing the work, they can take notes, they can take pictures of their progress and directly add it into OneNote. So as they are progressing, their work is being kept up to date. In Moodle, they had to take pictures, they had to write notes and then come and put it into, one, into Moodle. So it was double the effort. Here, it's all directly done. And I can see what they're doing in real time rather than waiting for them to upload. And another, the I guess we're we're almost at the end here. Just the last couple of minutes, but sure. there was a question from Rosemary. She said, um, "Do your students still use social media, WhatsApp for communities as well as Teams?" No, we don't need to anymore because we've got Teams. Uh, anytime they need to speak with me, they either drop me a line or request a meeting, and we meet or I answer them in the chat. Uh, I mean, using WhatsApp. We use it. WhatsApp, we use WhatsApp for our own team meetings in college between colleagues. <coughs> it provides a bit of a, a security because then no one else has got access to it. We can say anything we want about our managers. But uh, Teams really provide me with all the facilities that I need in dealing with my students. I can provide them with a virtual class. I can meet them informally. I can meet them on one to one. I can chat with them. And everything that we do is recorded. So later on, if there is an issue, people, uh, for example, one student might come uh, in a month time and say, oh, uh, I was never told what to do or I wasn't informed. And we can say, well, here are the re meeting re uh, record of the meetings, the emails you were sent. So I have uh, full control over what's been happening. Okay, um, last question, I feel. Um, a local user, so I, I can't see their name, but had mentioned earlier, I think Moodle might suit me better because I teach maths, which is a very linear course. Yes. I miss my students chat in the class. So I'd like to link the Moodle to Teams. Yes. And then goes on to say, how can the students write on one note? Because they need to show working in maths. Uh, if they have got a tablet uh, that can use ink, then they, they can easily do it. For example, again, when I'm explaining a formula, I can do that in OneNote. I go to OneNote, I open the tab, a new tab, and then I start writing on the screen with my uh, electronic pen, and it appears there. Then I have got the option to leave it as uh, handwriting, or I can convert it into formulas and text within the facility that a team has got. So I can convert it into text and formulas uh, so people can see it better. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Right. Uh, if uh, another another possibility is that some students don't have uh, tablets that they can write on, so what they can do is write on a piece of paper, take a picture of it, and put that picture up into OneNote, and then you can zoom in and out of it to see what they've done. In Moodle, you don't really you cannot do that. Yeah. Okay. So to your to to our friends. I would recommend that use Teams, use OneNote, and then add Moodle there. The Moodle will be your primary platform for delivery. However, Teams and OneNote give you the, the platform, the area to talk to them, see them face to face, chat with them, and also demonstrate uh, the formulas, uh, show the workings, how you're doing it. Okay. And as um, as as Dale has mentioned, um, there there is an equation editor um, within within OneNote within the yeah. text, so you you can make use of that. I, I wouldn't say it's the it's the most fluid <laughs> of, <laughs> no, of options, um, but definitely writing is much yeah. is much quicker. Um, but it it does have the advantage of being very legible. Um, okay, so uh, we we're coming to the end of our session just now. Um, I really appreciate people coming along uh, and joining today's sessions. They are normally 30 minutes. Um, you can hang on afterwards if you want yeah, to, to have a bit of I an will. extended chat. Um, but tomorrow, uh, we're going to be welcoming uh, James Ritchie from Fife College, who's going to talk us through um, his use of uh, G Suite, which is the 
Google tool. I understand we've been quite Microsoft heavy up until now. So we're just going to look at the, how the other side plays. Um, Google, which is obviously offers uh, a wide range of tools and is used extensively um, within schools, uh, which do feed into the colleges and university sector. So it's interesting just to have a look uh, what's available there. So if you have time tomorrow, 11 a.m., um, please join us anytime. It's just following the same link. Uh, I really appreciate it. Thanks for, for coming, yeah, everyone. Um, everyone. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yes. Before everyone go, uh, I've been looking, uh, glancing at all the messages on the chat section, and a lot of you have uh, put in uh, thanks and so forth. So I, in return, I wanted to say thank you for attending, and thanks for your uh, patience and uh, following what I've been saying. Uh, I hope it's been useful. Uh, again, my gratitude uh, to you guys as well. Sorry, I cannot respond to you individually in the chat, uh, but I just wanted to say thank you in return. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, no, I really appreciate everyone coming along. And, and that's great. And just so um, we, we can continue the conversation yeah. um, uh, in, a, in a second. But for all those who are watching the recording, um, thanks for joining us. Thanks and see you tomorrow.